Our sermon text today comes from Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 34. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the most high God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, these men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in attacking them and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was an earthquake so violent that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. When the jailer woke up and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself since he supposed that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted in a loud voice, do not harm yourself for we are all here. The jailer called for lights and rushing in, he fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them outside and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They answered, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. They spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. At the same hour of the night, he took them and washed their wounds. Then he and his entire family were baptized without delay. He brought them up into the house and set food before them. And he and his entire household rejoiced that he had become a believer in God. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, help us not to uh, delay all that must be done. Give us the courage and the belief that we have the power within us to change the atmosphere, to change our situation, to change the world. We ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. How many of you know that your attitude, your inward feeling expressed outwardly can make a difference? Your inward feeling expressed by your behavior See, this is why your attitude can be seen without a word. We all know the powder or the sulker. We often wear our expressions. And since an attitude is often expressed by our body language, 
And by the looks on our faces, it can be contagious. Have you ever noticed what happens to a group of people when one person by his expression reveals a negative attitude? Or have you noticed the lift you receive when a friend's facial expression shows love and acceptance? Our attitude can be more honest and consistent than our words. It has the potential to draw people to us or repel them away. This text reveals how the right attitude can make all the difference, not only to us, but to the people around us. Paul and Silas have been jailed for helping out a young woman who was being taken advantage of by men using her to tell fortunes. The owners of the slave girl were angered that Paul and Silas were messing with their money and took them to the authorities. The magistrates had them stripped, flogged, and thrown in jail. And the text says, then around midnight, the strangest thing happens. Paul and Silas begin to pray and sing hymns to the Lord. Beaten, chained, and held in the equivalent of a maximum security prison, yet the two begin to praise the Lord. They displayed an attitude of praise. Who does that while in chains? There's a story of a small businessman whose clothing store was threatened with extinction. You see, a national chain store had moved in and acquired all the properties on his block. And this one particular businessman refused to sell. All right then, we'll build around you, and then we'll put you out of business, the competitors said. The day came when the small merchant found himself hemmed in with a new department store, stretching out on both sides of his tiny little retail shop. And the competitor's banner announced grand opening and the merchant countered with a banner stretching across his entire little store, and it read, Main Entrance. <laughs> Christian author John Maxwell states, our attitude can give us an uncommonly positive perspective. It's like the Bible account of David and Goliath. On the one hand, the soldiers looked at Goliath the giant and said, he is so big, we can never kill him. But little David looked at the same giant and thought, he's so big, I can't miss. Oftentimes, by simply changing our attitude, we can transform a miserable experience into a highly rewarding one. And this was the case with Paul and Silas. It was around midnight, the time when we normally would give up. But Paul and Silas, their situation turned from a burden into a blessing. And I believe that prayer will do that for you. Prayer can give you that attitude adjustment that you need. And when we think about growing in our faith, in our spiritual walk with God, it often requires some level of testing. And our development often occurs during adversity. And sometimes it's a physical adversity and other times it's an emotional one. If we use the example of a kite, a kite rises against, not with the wind. And when we believe that things and people are coming against us, as was the case with Paul and Silas, there is a force present 
within us that can lift us higher above the challenge. You see, the kite needs the tension of the wind coming against it in order to fly. We don't often know how strong and resilient we are without the tension. Just like a kite, we need tension in order to fly. And we need that godly perspective to keep us higher and lifted above impossible situations. Paul and Silas were experiencing tension. But in those times when things looked bleak, in those times when we want to give up and throw in the towel, when frustration and negativity has set in. Those times when it's difficult to see a light at the end of a tunnel, especially if it's been one thing after the next. It's been one massacre after the next when we feel let down and disappointed, when things feel unbearable, somehow we have to hold on because late in the midnight hour, God can turn things around. The scripture says it was about midnight when Paul and Silas began to sing and pray. I'm talking about great faith. Great faith emerges when crises occur. As Christians, we have all entered the school of hard knocks. Wasn't it through the pit that Joseph came to power in Egypt? Didn't Moses have to go through the adversity of the desert in order to become the great liberation prophet? Wasn't it Peter hmm, who finally, humbled by his denial of Christ, that which enabled him to rise to the occasion and feed the sheep of God? Attitude. Talking about having a positive attitude, a hopeful attitude, and a right attitude. You see, these two men have demonstrated something amazing for us today. They have not allowed their circumstances to dictate their attitude. They have not allowed today to overshadow tomorrow. And I wonder, how are you reacting to the challenges we face today? I have a thought about that. So for those of you who read the e-blast on Friday, If you haven't, please go back and read it, because I am asking that we all come together and shower the first responders and the survivors with cards and letters of sympathy and compassion and encouragement and love. We need to let them know that we care. Because when you go through a trauma like murder, and you know that I know what I'm talking about. When you go through a trauma like murder, support and people holding you up, that's what gets you through. I know we don't know them, but God knows them and we know God. How many of us know that we have victory in Jesus. That same Jesus who was beaten and flogged and murdered. The same Jesus who hung on the cross bleeding and suffering. The same Jesus whose circumstance looked hopeless. Looked impossible. Yet he remained in the tension. He did not give up when it got hard. That today is a word for somebody. He did not give up when it got hard. You see, he was flying his kite above the violence and devastation that was upon him. 
to the human eye, there was no way, there was no way this thing was going to turn out good for Jesus. But by the power of God at work within him, what appeared to be hopeless was indeed a victory for humanity. The cross was indeed a burden which turned out to be a blessing for us. So are you aware that that same power is at work within us now, today, in 2022? What appears to be hopeless, and there's so much that appears to be hopeless could in fact be the moment when your faith emerges. Maybe it is your time to use your voice, to use your wallet, to use your time to educate yourself about what in the world is happening in our world. How we view a challenge makes all the difference in what happens next. Paul and Silas had an attitude of praise. And I'm not certain they knew just how much their actions were impacting the other prisoners and the jailer. Sometimes we just have to do what we have to do. See, this is the true power of a positive attitude. It is indeed contagious, but sometimes we forget. We get so caught up in the why, Lord? Why is this happening? Why me? And we forget that people around us are looking to see how we live out our faith. Do we give up or do we remain in the tension with the right attitude and a hopeful outlook. Because when we're in the midst of a crisis, it's so easy to become self-consumed. You see, these two men could have easily said to each other, where is God? Where is the Lord when we need him? Jesus said to us that he was coming back. And I'm beginning to really doubt it because it's just taking too long. Why are we in this position for proclaiming the good news? This is what he told us to do. We didn't ask for this. And if we get out of this, if we get out of this thing alive, I'm gonna go back to what I know. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to be beaten, to be publicly humiliated and thrown in jail, to be in so much pain, to be hurting and bleeding, to need a doctor and there's no doctor. If I could, I'd like to hurt those soldiers the way they hurt us. That could have been the conversation that the other prisoners overheard. And who would have blamed them for thinking that way? Having and displaying a negative attitude is what the world expects. But Paul and Silas are showing us a different way. And because of their faithful attitude, the other prisoners remained even after the doors were opened. And when the jailer realized the miracle which had taken place, he fell to his knees and he asked, what must I do to be saved? How can I have some of what you have? Wouldn't you like somebody to ask you that? Give me some of that good Christian faith. See, these men had been changed by what they saw and what they experienced from the Christians. What's your attitude like? What are you showing people through all this devastation and death? What are they seeing in you? Maybe it's time 
to adjust our attitude. Really, the, the moral of this whole story is what happened at midnight, right? With the praying and the singing. And if you're like me, and you listen to the news and to the politicians send their thoughts and prayers, you're pretty disgusted with that. But I'm not talking about the politicians, I'm talking about us. I'm talking about when things get tough, pray. When you are discouraged, pray. And the thing about our prayers is that they don't have to be fancy. They just need to be authentic. Pray for what change you really want to see. Don't pray because everybody's telling you to pray a certain way. When your feelings are hurt, pray. When you feel like giving up, pray. When your friends, when your friends don't treat you like they used to, pray. When your children are acting badly, pray. When your parents don't understand you, pray. Wherever trouble finds you, be it in the jailhouse or the courtroom, the bedroom or the boardroom, the penthouse or the basement, the church house, even in the cemetery, pray. Paul states in his letter to the Philippians, which incidentally he writes from prison, he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's where the power lives, through Christ. So what is the secret of Paul's contentment? Is to pray without ceasing and embrace the tension. To pray and let your requests be made known to God. To pray and let the peace of Christ, which surpasses human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So don't give up. Don't give up when it gets hard. Remain in the tension. Amen? Amen. Amen.